bonjour, we're higher up today because I have my tripod out and I'm sitting on top of the end table that I use for my feet relaxation and also organization for school and stuff like that. Um, and I don't want to move it because it is heavy and it's several years old. That's why it's so heavy because in the olden days, we made stuff with quality in mind, not quantity. Anywho, uh, today we are here to talk about my August TBR, which throughout my years as a reader, I have never been a TBR setter. Um, when I started a book club with my granny, the TBRs became something that was more likely to happen because I was like making sure we had we were a couple book a couple books ahead for our book club. And yes, we are still doing our book club. Two, three years actually, because we started in 2020, so 2020, 2021, 2022. Three years in, we're still going strong. We haven't read a lot of good books this year for our book club, but that's okay because it's a journey. Reading is a journey. And on this reading journey, I have stumbled upon a TBR. And I actually stumbled upon a job first, and then I stumbled upon countless new books that I was constantly touching and looking at and like seeing the pretty covers or seeing the cool interesting titles and then opening up and reading the first page or the first sentence and then being like ah you sound good let me put myself on hold for that despite the fact that I won't get it for four months and by then I will have moved on to other interests help me I could never be a bookseller but today I'm here to make Talk about a TBR for a readathon that I have wanted to do for years. And when I say four years, I mean four freaking years. I wanted to do this back when it was the Owls and Newt's readathon. And I'm finally here to do it. And I'm so freaking excited. And I will be attempting weekly vlogs. We'll have to see how that goes. Uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you haven't read the title, and that is the Magical Readathon. This is created by Book Roast, and it is so in depth and so detailed. So I will leave both her channel and her announcement video down in the description box because it is just as fantastic as I've always pictured it to be. And I've always watched all these people like look at my TBR for this awesome, really in depth readathon. You want to do it? Well, too bad. You're never going to do it because you never do it and now I'm like I'm doing it so like I said I'm going to hopefully fingers crossed do weekly vlogs they might not be uploaded the same day each week because hello I have a job and I work every third weekend um uh, but hopefully we'll figure it out um and I have decided to be a moon warden this was not my first choice it was my third choice because the first choice was a story weaver because that fit me the most, but the prompts did not fit me at all. And then I wanted to do the Mind Hunter, I believe that's what it's called. Something like that. I don't, I, I had everything written down and then I lost the papers, so. So there are six prompts for this readathon that fit into the Moon Warden section, the Moon Warden degree, and to get my advance to the next level, I need to read six books to fill these prompts because each prompt needs to have its own book. Now I'm not quite sure if that refers to the ones that are like eat a food with a book, drink a drink with a book. I don't know if I need to have my own book for that, but I have indeed gone and done that. So could I regret it? Probably. I probably will, but we'll see. We'll see. So Let's get into this. I don't have all of these books physically. I tried to wait to get at least most of these books physically, but we'll be waiting a long time because I'm still waiting. I thought I'd get them today, but they're still sitting on the desk waiting to be processed into the system. So the first prompt is elements, elemental studies, and I need to start a book with a drink. This is for an ordinary level, and this is the only one of elemental studies I need. And so the book I'm going to be starting with a drink is Sword Heart by T. Kingfisher. I was going to say T.K. Kingfisher, but it's just T. Kingfisher. This was never within my radar until Riley Marie read it and loved it and wept. She didn't wept, but she she. She read it, loved it, wept it, whatever. You know what I mean. So I don't know what this is about, but I think it's about this girl who ends up 
accidentally pulling a sword from a stone and now this monster who comes out with the sword is destined to protect her. This, from what I understand, is a light, cozy fantasy story. That means there's not a lot of death, a lot of gore. It's just a story and I think this girl's gotta go get her inheritance and that's all it's about. And no, it's not about them having to go get their inheritance on an island of death. It's about trying to get their inheritance and keep it away from her family. Her greedy little grubby family. From what I understand, I couldn't be completely wrong, but the prompt says I just have to start a book with a drink. I don't actually have to finish a book with a drink. But I do want to read this. It's an interlibrary loans, which means it's not from the library in which I work at. So I will have to, I only get it for six weeks at most. So, I'll have to read it sometime, and I might as well just read it in August because I already checked it out for August. So, there is this. The first book. So, the next class I need to get an ordinary in is Spells and Incantations, and this prompt is Recolor, which means I need to read a book that has a, the color that I randomly spun on the cover. Now, I do not have this book with me, but I did film myself going through and choosing this TBR, so I will leave that link down below in case you want to watch the entire one hour and like 30 minute long live stream. You totally should. Why not? I'm so charismatic. Um, but for this, I will roll what I got right now. Good. Uh, <laughs> I'm so scared because this is like <coughs> pink. No. There's no pink on this. Oh, no. Okay, I need a book with pink on it. This is fun, but it's also like, oh, no freaking way. And as you can see, we got the color pink, and there is very, very, very little pink on this cover. And I wish I had it in my physical hands to show you guys, but it's in a stack that needs to be processed. And this book is The Stardust Thief by... Chelsea Abdullah. Abdullah. Ab I butcher names. It's a thing that happens here. This book, I was not, like, I saw this on Orbit's Instagram. Like, they were promoting it. Obviously, it's a brand new book. They think it's going to be a big hit. And I was like, eh. I added it to my TBR and then I removed it from my TBR shortly afterwards. Afterwards, I was like, it's just going to be a basic fantasy story. And then my library got a copy of it and I was like, huh, might as well. So, boop, I'm on hold for it. It has been covered in the hardcover glaze and it is now desperately, I'm desperately waiting for it. So, yeah. I don't know what this one's about. I think it's a fantasy story. It's the first in a trilogy because, of course, it is. I say as somebody who's working on several trilogy stories. Um, and all I know is that it's got gin in it and that it has very cool pages in it. And I, I wasn't super excited for this, but then when I was covering it, I saw that inside the book, there are pages that look like a scroll that's been cut out, and it tells something about Jin. And I only know that because Jin is practically on every single page. So I don't know what it's about. It's about Jin, thieves, I would say, by the title. And if you don't know, I love myself some thieves, and I love myself some assassins, and I love myself some thieving assassins. So I don't think there's assassins in this, but there are thieves. So I guess one of three is fine. Um... I don't know what it's about, but there is pink on the cover. It's right here. This is the pink. It's not a lot, but it is pink. And I can't believe I stumbled upon this. It was honestly, it was honestly just unbelievable. I was like, this is that pink? Oh my god, it is pink. And it was pink, so there's that. Okay, so the next class I need to read two books for to get a qualified. And this is astronomy. And so O is for Levere which I definitely mispronounced. That's why I looked at it to make sure I was at least trying to pronounce every letter in there. And this is to read a book with the letter L in the title. So for this, I am reading Beasts of a Little Land by, oh dear God, uh, Ju, Juhia Kim? Ju, Juhia Kim. By an author that will be shelved on bookshelves at the library by the last name Kim. That's I'm reading this book. Um, this book is something completely out of my comfort zone. I think it's a love story between two characters. 
that aren't supposed to be in love. But it's also like, oh my god, I don't know what it's about. You'll have to see the vlogs if you want to know what these are about. The cover is very, very intriguing. It's not, I wouldn't say it's a beautiful cover, but I would say I like the way it looks. It's an appeasing, a pleasing, it's a pleasing cover to look at. Not beautiful, but I don't hate it. And I do like to point out to my library, to my coworkers, what covers I hate. So, this is not one of them. Anyway, I don't know what it's about. I think it's like a love story. It is completely out of my comfort zone, but the opening page sounded intriguing. And I was like, you know what? If I have to recommend two books every month, I'm going to need to breach out of my comfort zone. And so here we are with one of these books. So... Fingers crossed is all we can say. So for the qualified level, because I have to read two books, so the second book I need to read for this class is Ravenspawn. Read a book that has rangers or archers, <clears throat> sorry, archers in it. And for that, I'm going to be reading Ranger's Apprentice, book numero cinco. Wow. I'm not currently taking Spanish in high school. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but this is The Sorcerer of the North by John Flanagan. This I have mixed feelings about. This series follows the character of Will, who is an orphan child. And because it's an orphan, they get these opportunities to become apprentices to specific people. And guess who Will becomes the apprentice of? A ranger. So this is the fifth book in the series and I really enjoyed the first book. I thought it had a lot of humor. It was fun. I loved Will's interactions with Halt. Beautiful. Will has a nice little sneaky 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 act that's kind of really close to thievery so I was like oh, yes Will. And then the second book was just okay and the third book oh I have problems with the third book, particularly Warm Weed. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I, it was so bad and I dislike it so much that I don't even know what it's called. I don't remember the name. All I know is I did not like the, I did not like the direction John Flanagan went with Warm Weed or how quickly it was like introduced and then dismissed. Oh, it makes my skin burn. But this is the fifth book. So the fourth book. I'm actually, it's also here, but I, I didn't know if I would be starting this before August, and we're supposed to start a book for each prompt. So, The Battle of Scandia, I will also be finishing and possibly starting in August, but these are books I will be reading with my granny, so look out for those vlogs to hear our opinions on this. Um, I hope it's better. I hope it's better than the third book. <laughs> also, these covers just progressively get worse and worse. Like, why is there a man? Like, what is this cover? Why? And also, why is it $42 on Amazon? Why? What? John Flanagan, you are doing good for yourself, dude. But seriously, I hate the cover. Why do the covers get so ugly? For the next one, we have to do two. Another qualified level I need to reach and this is for restoration so for object restoration which is the ordinary level I need to complete it the prompt is a single object as the focus on the cover now I was originally going to do Belladonna by Adeline Grace but then I found out it doesn't come out till the 30th of the month and I was like mm, never mind so instead I'm doing notes on execution by Dania Kufaka Moving on, uh, this book is another book that's out of my comfort zone. August will be the month of out of my comfort zones. And this is also a book that I'm getting through an interlibrary loan because I wanted a physical copy of it and we only have an ebook copy of it and I don't, I don't want to do that. So this book, it's like got a singular object as the focus, which is like the necklace that has like two pictures on it and then there's two pictures inside it, which is like a house is one of them. I don't know what the other picture is. So it has multiple objects on the cover, but they're not the main focus. The main focus is the necklace. I don't know what it's, what it's importance to the story is, but it's on the cover and it's one object, so aha, uh -huh. the focus of the cover. This book is about a serial killer and he is being executed and I believe it's told 
through four points of view. It's told through his point of view on the day of his execution. It's also told by his, through his mother's point of view occasionally, a girl he's murdered's point of view, and then a cop, the cop who was hired or who ended up getting the case of finding him, I believe. So I don't know what's about, but Riley Marie also read this and she also enjoyed it. So I'm gonna find out if I can trust Riley's recommendations. And if I can, maybe I'll make a whole video reading books specifically by her, like her favorites. So we'll see. There's that, I'm excited to get my own copy of it. And there we go. And finally, for the qualified level of this is a detested prompt for I think many of us. That is scroll mending, read one of the oldest books on your TBR. So I'm doing try chapter. <laughs> this was a question I struggled with for a very long time because I didn't know if I wanted to like pick one right out of the batch or if I was going to like leave it up until I felt like it but I always fail readathons with this prompt because I hate this prompt because I, <laughs> the books I own that are I have owned and have wanted to read for the longest, are like not what I would read now. Like I wouldn't buy any of these books nowadays. I don't think, but I have all of them. Oh my god! Here's the papers. <laughs> it wasn't Mind Hunter. It was Mage Hunter. Apologies. I can't. Well. Wow. Anyway, they weren't lost. I purposely tucked them in one of these books. Anyway, what I was saying was I picked three of the oldest books that are both on my Goodreads TBR and I physically own because I want to read all the books I physically own. And those three are The Yellow Brick War by Danielle Page, The Queen's Poisoner by Jeff Wheeler, which my library owns this, so like if I like it, I can read the rest of the series from my library. I've tried to read this three times. I don't think I'm going to read it this readathon, but it's on here. And then, to put a little big swing into my TBR, I have a nonfiction. This is The Death, Com the Death Community in America, History of the Making, by two, au two authors, Melva M. Gnomeland and Ronald E. Gnomeland. And this is just like textbook style about the deaf community. Now, I bought this when I was really into ASL. And I love ASL. I love the language and I wish I could still be practicing it. But I had to stop because it started to hurt my fingers. And as I get older and as I do most of my hobbies on my computer, I am continually I'm continuing to cause harm to my arms and my fingers and my wrists and everything like that. So I have stopped learning ASL. I might start learning it again in the future because I did love the language and I wish I had kept up with it, progressed the studies. It was such a fun thing that me and my friends at school did, but I stopped. And I got this book back when I was learning ASL because I wanted to understand the history. And I'm not a nonfiction reader. I really still haven't gotten into that. I would love to read more nonfiction. Um, I mean, I checked out a biography from work and then it sat on my shelf until today when I brought it back. Because I was like, you're not going to read it this weekend. And this is the last weekend before August starts and then you're not going to have time for it then. So I'm not a big nonfiction reader, but I wanted to read this and I don't know if I will. The first chapter is 28 pages. I've read a couple pages before um, and I guess we'll have to see in that try a chapter tag that I'll be doing. I will probably, honestly, in all complete honesty, hold this off until the very end of the readathon and be like, oh, I failed this challenge. I don't care. Um, but I also think predictions of which one I'm going to continue reading this one. I read the first sentence of this after I finished that uh, live stream and I was just like, it's easy to read. It's an easy writing style. It's short and it's first person, 
which I hate. I don't like to read from first person, but I really want to finish this series because I own all four books. I've owned all four books since the fourth book came out, and I did really enjoy the first two when I read them, and I don't really remember exactly how it ended. I mean, I remember how the second book ended, but I don't remember what led up to that. But look, it says assassin on the back. How could this not be for me? How could it not be for me? So this is kind of the TBR for the month. You know, these three books can fit in for the other books, despite the fact that these are nowhere near as thick as the other ones are going to be. They're like all 400 pages. Oh dear, I just realized that they're all like 400, 375 page length books. Oh dear. I'm gonna have some regrets in August, but you'll have to stick around to figure them out, baby. So there's that. And then also, just because I'd like to be a little bit more dramatic, live on the edge, I am going to try and read. I want to try and finish this before the end of the month, but I only have one weekend left, and I'm probably not going to dedicate it to this. This is The Scar by Sergi and Marina that Nico and they actually wrote this beautiful book right here which is my favorite book of the year and so I am trying to read this but I'm reading it just as quickly as I read Vita Nostra which is to say not quick at all and because this is not going to be my main focus of August I'll probably not finish it in the month but I'll probably like try and read a little bit of it I like to read this before I go into work so I get like 10 minutes of it five of the every day so I'll get there eventually, right? And then also because, now this one I'm gonna try and not do, but also, I really want to. I'm gonna try and read more of the How to Train Your Dragon books. My library has up to book seven, so if I can read up to book seven in August, I'm kidding. But I read the first book last weekend of this series, How to Train Your Dragon, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. So when I went to work on Monday, I had a mental battle with myself of, don't do it, Madison. You don't need to do it. And then I did it. I picked up books two, three, and four in the How to Train a Dragon series. And I started How to Be a Pirate last night. And I read for an hour. And I got to page 103. So these books are just so quick to read. The first one took me two hours and 13 minutes to read. And this one's probably going to take me the same amount of time as is these. No! This bookmark does not stay in my book. Dang it. So, I'm probably, like, I'm probably going to read all of these this weekend, to be honest with you. Um, so then hopefully I'll kind of be, like, like out of the How to Train a Dragon phase in August until September when I pick up books, books five through seven, you know. But I really enjoy these books, and I'm probably, gonna, I'm probably not going to read them in August, but I thought I would include them just in case. So that's the end of this video. And like always, I now need to clean my room up. <laughs> I hate cleaning my room. Like every other person on the planet. Um, today, what? Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a very chaotic video because it's me and um, I can't be controlled. I can't be contained. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. If you guys are if you guys are participating in this readathon, tell me in the comment section and also tell me what book you are most excited for. If I had to say which one I was most excited for, I don't know because. A lot of these are, some of these are out of my comfort zone. I'm definitely not excited for any of them in the try the chapter challenge, so yikes. I want to say I'm most excited for Beasts of a Little Land, and I don't know why, but that's what's like calling to me. So that, I don't know why. That won't be the first book of the readathon, or hey, maybe it will be the first book of the readathon. We'll have to see. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'm extremely uncomfortable sitting here on this end table. I'm going to go. I love you all so very, very much. And I hope to see you guys all next time. And hey, don't forget, I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Adios.